Oh, these doors still work. Hey, we're going to be opening up these doors and the doors at our Oak Hill campus in two weeks. July 12th, we will be having worship in these sanctuaries, 9 o'clock and 1030. We would love to have you join us. We recognize also that some of you may be joining us online for the very first time. We're so glad that you are with us. As we begin our worship today, our online host will be giving you a, a possibility, an opportunity to invite someone to worship with us online today. So if you see that, just punch that uh, invite button and invite a friend or some family members to join us in worship today. With that, we're so excited. Our worship begins now. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I
I hope you cling to that truth today. What the Lord says is absolutely true, that he has made you a child of God. You are his very own possession. Welcome to worship with us today at Woodbury Lutheran Church. We're so glad that you are with us. Today is our final service sermon on John 10.10 10, that Pastor Tom Fotenhauer will be sharing with us. We're so excited to hear about what the abundant life looks like. And so welcome to worship. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christians have been using the words of the Apostles' Creed to confess their faith in the triune God since the 4th century AD. That means for 1,600 years, the church across the world has used these words to confess what we believe about our God. Let's say and sing the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in me. Descended into darkness, he rose in glorious light. Forever seated. Saints communion and in your holy church. 
church, I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in the name of Jesus. As we prepare to receive our offering, I want to remind you of the great privilege that it is to be in ministry and to continue the ministry of Woodbury Lutheran Church. You know, COVID-19 has had a tremendous impact on a lot of ministries, one being Trinity First Lutheran School in South Minneapolis. Bridge to Success, a program for their students, has been hit significantly. And so we have an opportunity you can show up at our Valley Creek campus and pick up one of these boxes, uh, fill it up with all sorts of sweet opportunities for families. There are actually 80 families uh, that can be blessed through one of these boxes and, and the things that you put in there to bless them with games, puzzles, uh, crafts, whatever it happens to be, opportunities for them to find joy and to be blessed in the name of Jesus. So stop by our Valley Creek campus, pick up a box. 29 have already been filled up. We have 80 to fill up. And so I want to encourage you to participate, to be a part of the kingdom work of Woodbury Lutheran Church. We'll receive our offerings at this time.
Will you join with me in a word of prayer? And Father, we come to you today and grateful for your presence. And Lord, we are weary from living in this broken world. There's so much going on around us, so much that leads us down paths that cause us despair. And yet with you walking by our side, there's always hope. We're so grateful not only for your presence, but for your guidance as well. Lord, this day we celebrate uh, those celebrations in our midst. We are so grateful for the opportunities to join together for birthdays, for anniversaries, to be reminded of uh, those times where we are smiling. We know, Lord, that you bless us in these ways and many others. But during those trials that we face, uh, we pray that you would also bring comfort and strength For those who have lost loved ones, we ask, O Lord, that you would remind them of your words of promise and hope, that they would be reminded of the reunion that awaits all who fall asleep in the faith. Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are struggling with their health, those who are awaiting surgeries in the coming weeks. We thank you, Lord, for these opportunities that have been put on hold that now are taking place, and we pray that you would be with the medical personnel, the surgeons, and everyone who might be in those operating rooms, that you would bring healing. We pray for those who are still struggling in this world around us as we are weighed down by the atmosphere and environment. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would remind us of what it means uh, to walk with you that we might be witnesses of your love, your grace, your forgiveness, that we might be reminded that we are loved by you with an everlasting love. Strengthen us, that others who look at us see not us, but see you shining through us. And now hear us as we lift our voices in praying together the prayer your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today we celebrate the Lord's Supper. As we sing our next hymn, I would encourage you to prepare the elements that you have in your home to celebrate. Oh, 
Let us now confess our sins to God, our Father. Lord God Almighty, we come to you this day being reminded once again that we are sinners in need of a Savior. Your word tells us, O Lord, that the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. We recognize, O Lord, that you speak to that in your commandments and that we have broken these commandments that tell us not to steal, not to kill, and not to destroy. We are thieves. We are murderers. We have harmed others' reputations. Lord, we pray that you would hear us as we lay our sins before you. We seek the forgiveness that you offer through your Son, Jesus. We're so grateful to know that you have blessed us and some amazing ways through your son Jesus. Jesus himself speaks to us in John 10, verse 10, that he has come to give us life. That forgiveness is ours through Jesus' death on the cross that we might experience eternal forgiveness, eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of forgiveness. Now prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. Amen. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper today, we do so being reminded that our Lord Jesus is with us, that he offers us the forgiveness of sin in this sacrament. You have your communion elements before you. As you celebrate the Lord's Supper today, I'm going to encourage you to speak the words that I speak over those elements, that the leader in your household would share those elements with anybody else in your home. If there are any children or others who have not been properly instructed, they might receive a blessing rather than receiving the Lord's Supper. But now repeat these words. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, and took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, And take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks... He gave it to them, saying, And drink of it, all of you. And this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and eat the body of Christ and given for you. And take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Jesus Christ. 
Our first scripture reading comes from Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, beginning in verse 1. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, truly, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. 
I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In New York's Times Square, an officer who was kneeling, raising his arms, a demonstrator then shaking his hand, the two then hug. You could hear the cheers erupting in the crowd. see the line of law enforcement and then the moment it all changes a highway patrol trooper walking up to this woman hugging her she was grateful i love you man i love you man Well, this last weekend, uh, I received a text from a good friend of mine, and the text went like this, what's happening to the world? I need an answer. And as I look back on the last three months, this, this text is, is perfect, isn't it? Uh, we've had pandemics, uh, stuff is going crazy with the economy, we have uh, racial tensions that are boiling over in all kinds of destructive ways. And as I, I just sit back and as I look at the world around us right now, I'm reminded, and I, I hate to admit this, but I'm reminded of a quote from an old Green Bay Packer coach, Vince Lombardi. And one day at practice, he was, he was looking at his team, and it was a disaster. It was chaos. And I'll give you the PG version. And he said, what the heck is going on around here? What the heck is going on around here? And doesn't it feel like that's what's happening in our world today? There's chaos and brokenness, and we, we see it in our social media feeds. We, we see it on the news. We are experiencing it even in our own families. Brokenness and division. Uh, hateful words. It can be overwhelming. And we're left to wonder, what is happening to the world. I need an answer. Over the past three weeks, we've been in this series called 1010. And we've been looking at a verse from, from Micah 6, verse 8, and just three words that we've been focusing on. Justice, mercy, and to be humble, humility. And over these three weeks, we've been challenging you to, to live out these words, not by the definition of the world around us, and not by our own definition, but by how Scripture, how God defines what these words mean in our lives. And so three weeks ago, I, I looked at, at justice, and the Hebrew word for that is mishpat. And at its very core, it means to treat everyone with equality. Because we're all made in the image of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Then Pastor John unpacked mercy. It's kind of hard to say. Chesed is how you, you say it, or chesed. And that word doesn't have an English word that captures it at all. And so it's really three things going on. It's the love of God plus the kindness of God plus the faithfulness of God all merged together into this one word called mercy. And then last weekend, uh, Vicar Dean talked about walking humbly. And the Hebrew word for, for humble there is tsana. And at its core, it means to be modest. But then when you look at the Greek equivalent, it has a, a twofold meaning. It means to be as gentle as a breeze. But then on the other side, it has this really strange meaning of being able to tame a wild lion. And so it's really this idea of power under control. And so just think for a moment what our world would look like if it was marked by justice and mercy and walking humbly with God. Well, in John 10.10, Jesus says these words. He says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose is to give them, us, a rich and satisfying life. The NIV says an abundant life. And it's hard to, to miss the contrast here between the thief and Jesus. Uh, there's a tension going on. It, it reminds me of a tug of war match. And on, on one side, you've got the, the thief who's trying to steal and, and kill. And that's pitted up against all the good that Jesus wants to give to us in, a, in an abundant life. In a rich and satisfying life. And that doesn't mean a wealthy life and an easy life. But it's a life that comes when it's rooted in Jesus and what he has done for us. But there's a battle going on. A 10-10 a has been called in. And we feel that tension, not only in the world around us, but we feel that tension in our own lives when we reflect and when we're honest. Now, the Apostle Paul talks about this in the, the book of Romans. And it's this great scene where he's talking about the battle of sin in his life versus the life that he, he so badly wants to live. And he says these words in Romans 7.15. I don't really understand myself. I'm glad he's not the only one. Uh, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. And he goes on to talk about this, this battle that's raging even within him. And it's just like John 10.10 10, where there's the, the thief who's there trying to steal and kill and destroy. And then there's Jesus who's trying to give us an abundant life, a purposeful life, a life that makes a difference in the world around us. And so as we look at John 10.10 10, a little more closely, a question comes to mind. Who is this thief? I think what we, we do most of the time, and I've found myself doing this as well, we immediately believe that the thief is the devil, that the devil is the one who comes to steal and to kill and destroy. And while it is true that the devil is a thief and a liar, when you look at the context of John 10.10, 10, the devil is not the thief in John 10.10. 10. It's actually false teachers. It's these false teachers that Jesus is speaking to at this point in Scripture that are known as the Pharisees. And we see these Pharisees all throughout the Gospels. They're, they're supposed to be the ones who are leading and teaching Israel about the ways of God. But they have gone off the rails and they have become false teachers. And so as, as Jesus is unpacking this whole shepherd narrative in John 10, it's really a response to the way that these Pharisees treated one of his sheep in John chapter 9. It's this great account of a man born blind. And the Pharisees are, are teaching that this man was born blind as a punishment 
for the sins of his parents. Or he must have been been known that he was going to do something wrong in his life, so he was being punished for that. And Jesus can't handle the way that these supposed teachers of Israel are teaching one of his precious sheep and treating one of his precious sheep. And so he goes into this narrative about the Good Shepherd. And it's interesting, within John chapter 10, there are three sort of mini parables that he tells to compare himself to these false teachers and and how they're off base and how he's the, the one true shepherd. And so he says that they are foolish gatekeepers because they don't know who to let in to the sheep pen. And they're, they're letting thieves into the sheep pen who are doing bad things to the sheep. But Jesus says, I am the true gatekeeper. And then Jesus says, you, you bring death, but I bring life. And you abandon the sheep. You are like the hired help. At the first sign of trouble, you know what you do? You hightail it out away from the sheep and you leave them to die. But I am the good shepherd. And I sacrifice my life for my sheep. Let's pause here for a moment. And let's think about those in our world who are shepherding people. Are they shepherding them toward life? Or are they shepherding them toward destruction? Because there's a a lot of voices speaking in our world right now. There's a, a lot of shepherding going on. There's a lot of guiding of people. And while it's true that the devil is not the thief in John 10.10, he certainly is all about chaos and brokenness, and destruction. He's about stealing justice. He's about killing mercy. He's about destroying humility. And don't we see that playing out in our world right now? Isn't it filled with chaos, and division, and brokenness? It's CNN versus Fox News. It's Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter. It's those who who say it's police brutality versus those who say, what's the deal with black-on-black crime? It's Democrat versus Republican. And I could go on and on and on. It's kneeling versus standing. Because here's the deal. The devil is all about scattering the sheep. But Jesus, as the good shepherd, is about gathering all the sheep. And not just from the sheep pen of Israel. He says, I have other sheep who I must bring in to my pen. You see this imagery of a a shepherd. It was used for about a thousand years before Jesus uses it here in John 10. And it was always used to describe, it was a metaphor for a mighty king. That the shepherd in the Old Testament was was the mighty king. It it was God coming to rescue and save his people. And so it's no wonder then that a, a few verses later the people are saying to Jesus, Are you our mighty king? Are you our Messiah? There are other false shepherds that have come along the way, these false teachers that Jesus has been talking about. And the the devil is going to certainly try to scatter and cause chaos and bring brokenness into the world. But as the good shepherd, Jesus knows his sheep. His sheep know him. They listen to his voice. And they follow him. And friends, that progression is so important because it starts and the foundation is this truth. That Jesus knows his sheep. Jesus knows his sheep. Did you you catch that little detail in verse 3? That he calls his own sheep by name. 
And so he, he gathers his sheep, we read in the sheep pen, and then he leads them out and they, they follow because they know him and they know his voice and they trust him. But it all starts with this truth that Jesus knows his sheep. Now, I don't know a whole lot about shepherding besides being a, a, a pastor. What I do know about shepherding, I learned from the kids' movie, Babe. And I love the movie Babe, and every time I watch that movie, I start crying because this little pig becomes a, a sheep pig. He's a dog that, that herds the sheep, even though he's a pig. And throughout that movie, you see this, this little pig and the dogs and the shepherd, they're always trying to drive the sheep out. They're always trying to take these sheep that are wandering and, and bring them back together. And when I look at a whole bunch of sheep, i got to be honest, they all look exactly the same to me but not to a shepherd. Because a shepherd knows the details of his sheep. A shepherd can differentiate one sheep from another sheep simply by one of the curls of their wool. They can differentiate one sheep from another just by the gait and how they walk. Because a shepherd knows the details of the sheep. And perhaps the greatest, most astounding attribute of our God is that he knows us. God knows you. He knows the details of your life. In no other faith does God understand what is happening in the lives of his people. Because God is always some far-off deity that's too busy and too holy and too important to come down to be with his people, but not in our faith. Because Jesus takes on flesh and he makes his dwelling among us. He becomes like one of us, taking on the very form of a servant, as we talked about last weekend, humbling himself to be with us, to know us, to know his people. And so Jesus knows all the times that you have received injustice instead of justice. Jesus knows every moment where you were shown no mercy. Jesus knows when the the proud stomped on your heart instead of showing you humility. And on the other side of the coin, Jesus knows when you weren't seeking justice. Jesus knows when you weren't being merciful. Jesus knows when you were being proud. And the beauty of Jesus taking on flesh is he does something about both of those things. You see, the shepherd, the shepherd becomes the sheep. The shepherd becomes the perfect, sinless Lamb of God. As Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I sacrifice my life for the sheep. In humility, Jesus dies. And in his death, he receives injustice so that we might receive justice, even though we don't deserve it. He shows us what mercy looks like by receiving no mercy. The shepherd becomes the sheep so that we can receive, so that he can give to us an abundant life. The Apostle Paul, at the end of that section where he's struggling with with sin and the life that Jesus has, has called him to, he says these words, He says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Now, just keep in mind for a moment that he wrote half the New Testament. Like, what have you done lately, right? He planted more churches than we can even imagine. He did more in an hour than I will do my whole life. And yet he says, oh, what a miserable person I am. You see, the impact of sin that breaks our world and breaks us is far beyond than what we can ever imagine. What's going on with our world? It is busted by sin. And Paul says, chief of sinners, though I am, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
You see, Paul knew his shepherd. And he knew what it meant for him that his shepherd became a sheep and gave his life for him. And because of that, Paul would live every moment of his life from there on, listening to his shepherd and following his shepherd. And that's what we're invited into today. In the midst of all the voices clamoring for our attention, some leading to, to destruction and, and death, others leading to life. Who, who are you listening to? Who is the voice that is impacting your life right now? You see, Paul knew his shepherd, so he listened. There's this great little verse the beginning of of chapter 10, where we see how this, this works in our lives. After he has gathered his own flock, talking about the good shepherd Jesus, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They don't recognize the hired hand. They don't listen to the voice of of the one who's going to lead them to chaos and destruction because sheep, even though they're not very smart animals, they know the voice of their shepherd. They know the one who they can trust and they listen and they follow. Again, my, my picture of a shepherd is always driving the sheep from behind. But what's so amazing about a shepherd in in Palestine is that they would always lead their sheep from in front. And I think this is a a beautiful picture of what the gospel does. We can can push from behind with, with guilt and fear, and that will work for a little while, but it will never last. How beautiful is it that our shepherd leads from in front. And he leads by going to the cross for us, going to the tomb, rising again from the dead so that we can trust him and follow him. I don't know where you all are at with listening to voices today, but isn't it about time that we listen to the voice of our shepherd and allow him to be out front, leading and guiding and directing. And as we follow, he invites us into an abundant life where justice and mercy and humility reign. But here's the deal. True and lasting reconciliation, it can only come from Jesus. That's what the Apostle Paul knew. That in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the brokenness that was all around him, and it was was all around him, that true and lasting reconciliation only comes from the Good Shepherd. Listening to his voice and following. Each and every week I, I bug you about these scripture cards. Because uh, I believe there's, there's such a simple yet powerful tool to help you walk deeper with Jesus. And so there, there's a few different parts to this scripture card. We always have some questions that will help you to reflect on what you heard in the message. And one of the things I hear from people all the time is I don't know how to pray. And so we make it really easy for you. We give you some prayer prompts so you can pick it up and you can pray with, by yourself or you can pray with your family. You can use this in your small group or for a devotion. And there's, there's one section that I want to highlight today we call Live It Out. And on the, the Live It Out section this week, I'm challenging you to do something simple. I gave you six different scripture verses, all from the book of Matthew, all just one single verse. And each of them is the good shepherd talking. It's your shepherd speaking 
And I'm inviting you to, to just listen to what he has to say. And each of those verses speaks of justice, mercy, and humility. And maybe it's something you'll do by yourself. You'll just read that single verse and you'll, you'll think about it. You'll meditate on it. You'll, you'll listen for how God is speaking. And then you're going to respond. And maybe you'll do that as a family. You can do that easily at, at a devotion time, at dinner. An easy way to listen to what your shepherd is saying in the midst of all the other voices. And then to receive his invitation to, to follow. Because what's, what's happening to the world? I need an answer. And we know that, 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 that a 1010 has been called, that there's a, a battle raging on all around us and even inside of us between the, the things that the thief is trying to bring into our lives and the full life that Jesus so badly wants to give to us. So in the midst of it all, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So friends, Jesus knows you. The good shepherd knows what's going on in your life right now. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And he invites you to know him. To hear his voice. To follow. And here's what's going to happen. As we follow Jesus, we're going to look at our lives. And we're going to see that they are lives that are marked by justice and mercy, and humility. And we're certainly not perfect, but we're going to see lives that honor the Good Shepherd, the one who became the sheep, that we might know an abundant life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus into this world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Jesus, you truly are our only hope for lasting reconciliation today, tomorrow, and until you come back again. So draw us back to you, Jesus, by your Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Encourage us, move us to follow and to listen to the one voice that actually matters. Your voice. And may that change us. And may it change the world around us for your glory and for your honor, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you heard me talk about the scripture card. You can grab that on our church app. If you haven't downloaded that, you can get that any place where you get your apps. A great way to stay connected. Uh, you can also find that scripture card on our website. If you just click on the resource button, uh, you'll see it. It'll lead you to a drop-down banner, and in that banner you will see scripture card. Just click on that encourage you to take this message and, and bring it deeper again uh, by yourself or with your family or in your small group as we continue to, to learn what it means to listen and to follow our Good Shepherd. And you've already been sent out into the world. You've been encouraged in this worship service through singing, through God's Word, through Holy Communion. And so now I send you with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace now and always. And just a reminder, next weekend for the 4th, we will be online only. And then on July 12th, we'll be online and we'll be meeting back in person on our Valley Creek and Oak Hill campuses. Have a great week.
Speak loud. 